1994. Uh, at that point in time, I made a bunch of independent films in Australia. Films uh, that you might have heard of. Things like uh, The Crossing, Proof, uh, Some of Us, Romper Stomper. And these films had gone out to film festivals all around the world, so that meant I was getting interest from people in other countries to go and work overseas. And uh, I was in Los Angeles. I did my first American movie, 93 into 94, called The Quick and the Dead, with Sharon Stone, Gene Hackman, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. I got back to LA, and I was given the script and the message that Bernardo Bertolucci wanted to meet me. And being a big fan of Bertolucci's work, I said, great. So I read the script, it was called Miss Shumway Waves Her Wand. Okay. So I go to the meeting with Bernardo. He's watching soccer. Italy versus Brazil, I believe. Couldn't care less than I was there. I worked out through the slight conversation pieces we were having that he didn't actually want to work with me, but his wife, a director called Claire Peplo, very nice lady, very smart, very warm person, she wanted to work with me. So, this script, I tell you, it was a pretty good script. It had a good title if you're going to go into festivals. The Shumway Waves are one. It's interesting. By the time it came out, some clever person had decided to change the title into, and this is why I know you haven't seen this film, because <laughs> two reasons, terrible title, shit movie. Um, they changed the title to Rough Magic. Rough Magic. What does that even mean? What does that mean? What's rough magic? That means when the man saws the woman in half, he saws her in half. Because it's rough magic? I don't know. Anyway, so we shot in Guatemala. We shot all through Mexico. Beautiful country in Mexico. We went down through the center, all these big um, national parks and state forests. You see, there's a little thing that happens when I read a script. It's kind of like a self-protection thing. The uncomfortable bits, I kind of ignore. Like when I was reading Darren Aronofsky's script for Noah, there was a piece there that said in the scene that I would be falling half naked into the ocean on the southwest coast of Iceland. I kind of just put that aside to be dealt with later. You know? Otherwise, I'm going to be worried about that for six months, you know? Anyway, so I'm reading the script, and it says in this one scene that my character would be unconscious on the floor, and a spider would crawl up his body, up his throat, and into the mouth. Put that aside, to be dealt with later. So we're making the movie. We went through Guatemala, Mexico. We get back to America, shooting in Santa Monica, and then on the call sheet says the next day we're going east of the city. We go to a place called Lancaster, and it's going to be the spider scene. Right? So I get to uh, the set the next morning. The producer comes out to meet me. Hello, Russell. How are you, English bloke? He goes. Um, um, look, today, it's going to be a very exciting day. I said, yeah, yeah, actually, we meant to talk to you about that. So what's this thing with the spider? How are we going to do that? CGI? Blah, blah. He goes, oh, no, no. Uh, the tarantula man is here. <laughs> tarantula man. Yes, yes. The tarantula man is here. He has brought six specimens for the director to look at, and she has chosen the largest. <laughs> All right, what the fuck? Tarantula, and he goes, yes, sir. but you don't have to worry because, you see, the tarantula man, when doing things like this with those creatures, he is able to milk the venom from the creature so it's perfectly safe. Have a good day. <laughs> right on. Now, uh, they showed me this tarantula. Bigger. <laughs> than my fucking hand. Big, hairy tarantula. And, from what I could tell, big, hairy tarantula with, quite frankly, a piss-poor attitude. <laughs> so, okay, this is what we're doing. So, so we go to the studio. I'm surrounded by all these lights, clean lights, very old-fashioned, very hot lights. They said, lie on the floor. When you lie on the floor, you say action, 
tarantula man will place the spider on your body, it'll give it a little tickle in its eyes, and it will run up your body as long as you keep your mouth open, it will run up your body, up your neck, and into your mouth, at which time tarantula man will pluck it from your mouth. I'm like saying, okay, but in the back of my mind, I'm going, <laughs> all right. So I lay down, I go, action. Tarantula man puts the spider on my body, tickle, tickle up the bum, off he goes, runs up my body, up my neck, and into my mouth. <laughs> Tarantula man pops him out, and I'm like, whoo! Good on your little spidey boy, did all the freaking things, right? Got it all right, early day for me, perfect. I said, oh no, we're going to adjust the lights and do it again. <laughs> Second take, third take, fourth take, fifth take. In the fifth take, I found myself, you know, standing there waiting and I'm, I'm standing next to Tarantula Man. So I thought I'd just have a conversation with him. I said, uh, <laughs> pretty cool how you can milk the venom from the creatures for things like this. He goes, you can milk the what? <laughs> So the one safety net I thought I had doesn't exist. So I'm getting harder and harder. These lights, man, they're so old-fashioned. I don't use them anymore because they're dangerous and hot. And I'm starting to sweat take six, right? Oh, and I'm starting to get all over my body because it's a mixture, right, of the heat and also a goodly amount of adrenaline. And I'm starting to become what can only be described as moist. So take seven, right? Take seven. Oh. Keep the chair. Turn your fucking alarm off. What do you do? So, take seven, right? Put the spider on me. Action. Tickle, tickle. It's coming up my body. Goes up my neck. And then it just stops. And it spreads itself out. And it starts to push in on my throat. Just push in and push in. And I'm just thinking, what's going on here? And I'm thinking, all I gotta do, I'm just gonna keep my mouth open. That's what I said. Keep your mouth open. And he'll go for your mouth. And I go, give him an extra tickle. And it went up to my. It's like, what was that? Take eight. Take nine. Nine takes with a live tarantula crawling into my mouth. Next day, I wake up, right? And I got a rash all over my chest, down my legs, up the side of my neck, on my hands. So I called production. Production calls the doctor. They send the doctor over. I explained to the doctor what we were doing the day before. He goes, oh, okay. Well, look, um, <clears throat> you see, uh, what's happened is that uh, when a tarantula gets aroused, it will eject these small, fine hairs from its legs. And those hairs are so fine that they can actually easily fit into a human paw. So what's happened to you, young man, is your body is now full of tarantula venom. Now, it's not enough to hurt you, but it will be uncomfortable for a number of days. Put this on it, take this pill, the itching will go away in about a week. So, I'm standing here telling you this story. And you can Google this if you want, because I'm pretty sure in the entire history of the motion picture industry, I am the only Academy Award winner who's been fucked in the neck by a direction. <laughs> So I'm going to sing this song. I know you know this song. Sing along with me if you want.